Clark Simmons was there as the bombs fell. The lifelong Brooklynite remembers when he enlisted in the Navy. We had no position for a, a black man at that time. And all I'm going to do is go there and be a, a, a porter, a shine shoes, make bed, serve the meals to the officers. And that's what he did until Mr. Simmons found himself working on the USS Utah. The battleship was docked for the December 6th weekend in Pearl Harbor, giving him the chance to relax in Honolulu before heading home on Monday. But while gazing out his window, known to the seamen as a port, Mr. Simmons describes what he witnessed on that fateful Sunday, December 7th. Twin uh, rainbows was coming over the mountain. And then meanwhile, these fighter planes and dive bombers were making a, a run on the ships. The Utah was struck by torpedoes, quickly sinking, killing nearly 60 sailors. But Mr. Simmons escaped, jumping into the harbor, grasping a nearby buoy for dear life. As they were machine gunning us in the water and, and dropping bombs on the ship, I began to swim to Fort Island. 19 years old at the time, he made it to shore, sustaining injuries to his shoulders, left leg, and head, leaving him legally blind. During the whole time, the Christian man had his faith. I thought of how lucky I was, and I, I remember just like it was yesterday. Thank God. Aaron Chabin also has vivid memories of December 7th. The 93-year-old Bayside, Queens resident was only 10 months into his deployment as an Army private in Honolulu. Just days before the deadly attacks, he says his bunkmate noticed suspicious activity. The guy on radar reported to his commanding officer and from what we heard, they said, go back to sleep. You're having pipe dreams. <laughs> what was assumed to be a dream became a horrific reality. 18 years old at the time, Mr. Chabin says he was reading a newspaper at the Schofield Barracks when the Japanese struck. We heard an explosion. Someone ran out and uh, we heard a yelling, it's the Japs. And someone else yelled, you're crazy. That's when he grabbed his 45 caliber gun and ran to his post at the communication center. The Schofield Barracks wasn't hit by the bombs, but the neighboring area was destroyed. Next to us was Wheeler Field, though. They had a post exchange that was supposed to open up Monday. It burned to the ground. As did other buildings in nearby fields. Mr. Chabin would stay in the area, helping as chief communications operator. Like Clark Simmons, Mr. Chabin served the country until the end of World War II in 1945. Many call these men heroes, but he says it was just another day on the job. Everything was automatic. You didn't stop to think of what to do. You just did it. Reporting for Currents, I'm Tim Harfman.